Hi there, welcome to my channel. Today we will be taking some analysis on my currency pairs for the week. Last time we did talk about um, trading Euro GBP, US 30, US Zizar, and gold. And if you go look at the chart, you can see that some of them did play out as we expected. US Zizar currently on an uptrend. US 30 currently at the zone where we should expect the markets to react. But based on the fundamental aspect of it, best to stay clear of it for now because it's, it's highly prone and highly susceptible to fundamental analysis. So for this week, I'll be focusing on the Euro GBP structure. Why am I doing that? Because it's got a structure that is playing out as to be expected. Last week we saw a bullish flag on Euro GBP on the one hour time frame and on the four hours time frame you see that the flag is currently in motion. So we take this we take this to map out the the channel based of the flag can see that it's currently out of the channel, a broken out of the channel. And what we're expecting to see is for the market to continue, did break out, did a retest, and now we're expecting kind of like a continuation on this pair. And, and something to note about the Euro GBP pair is that when we have a bullish Euro GBP, we should expect to see a bearish GBP across board. So if we have a bullish Euro GBP, then we should be seeing a bearish GBP. So GBP regardless, GBP XXX, GBP card, GBP AUD, GBP chair, whatever GBP you trade, and you've seen your bullish structure on Euro GBP, expect to see a bearish structure on the other GBP pairs. So currently we're seeing a bullish flag on Euro GBP that has done a it has broken out of the channel of the flag, did a retest. So for this week, we're expecting to see continuation. So all you have to do is look for your reason for entry. And personally, to enter my markets, I go on the 15 minutes time frame. That's where I go to enter my market. So when the market opens later today. What I'll expect to see is kind of like price maybe gap into this point or just doing a touch down to this point and then pushing us all the way up. Or it could just continue on its way up. But the bottom line is my bias for UHBP for the week is bullish. So there is a 17 pip move to that point. If that, if that move doesn't happen, we just expect to ride GBP all the way to the top. So let's see what this, there's a tiny, teeny weeny you know, flag right here. Let's see if it's going to play out and see the point where it's likely to play out to. And then when that happens, we look to take GBP. Good. So expect price to return to this zone for a cleaner and, and better entry to avoid unnecessary drawdown. So you can look to enter at this point at the 0 0.85063, or you could just ride it all the way up. But I'll prefer, I would rather look to enter at this point. I want to see price reaction at this point. I'll look to see my um, candlestick patterns, be it my railroad track, be it my pin bag, be it my whatever reversal candlestick pattern you trade or you're comfortable with, you can look to see them here and take your market. So Euro GBP is bullish on the four hours time frame, look for entry on the 15 minutes time frame, and that'll take your trade. So having seen the bullish Euro GBP, let's just pick one random GBP pair, so GBP CAD. So for GBP CAD on the four hours time frame, let's see what we have. So seeing as we have a bullish flag on Euro GBP, it's to be expected that we should see a bearish flag on GBP XXX. So this is giving us more like a bearish pennant. So what we simply want to see happen here 
is for price to break out of it. So currently it's still, still ranging within that zone. So it hasn't really come out of it. Still ranging within that zone. Okay, so it's not really a pennant pennant. What we have also is more like a flag. But unlike the Euro GBP, this is still within the consolidatory phase of the impulse move. So what we want to see is for the market to break out. So this, the bias for this is a sell. So still the same thing like we would do for Euro GBP. We could look to see them 15 minutes, see the market to pull back, see the market to pull back and then hope to trade it from that point of pull back. So see something like this, see what we have here. So remember, these are all my biases. Feel free to you know, share your bias in the comment section. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. We're happy to have you. Don't forget to subscribe. Good, so we have this wedge right here and we have uh, following this impulse move. So you could either continue to sell because the market closed last week at a very strong bearish move. So you can consider the sell right after the market opens, a way to see a little pullback and join the market. But this for the week, the bias for the week is a drop, okay? The bias for the week is a drop because it just keeps creating flags upon flags upon flags. There's another flag here, so it just keeps creating flag upon flag. So there's a little flag in here. So if that plays out, you expect price to break out out of the major flag and continue to trend downwards. So GBP XX says my bias for the sell. You could decide to pick any of the GBPs that you're comfortable with trading. Okay, do your analysis, see your reason for entering the market and then take your trade. Okay. So Euro GBP, the bias is bullish. GBP XXX, the bias is bearish. So GBP AUD, I've got my eyes on GBP AUD. So what I want to see happen here, local smart money trading. There are no lot of sellers are trying to come in and they push the market right up, right to take out all the stop losses. So when the market opens, the might keep still pushing this upwards. So just look, to, look for entries around the zone and sell this long term. Because if you look at your GBP, if you look at GBP AUD, on the bigger time frame, you see that the market is structured for a long-term sell. Okay, so two things: you could, you could wait for price to return to this point, which is what I will do. Is what I would do, seeing as I want to be in this trade long-term, I'd rather wait for the market to return to this zone before I take the ultimate sell. Because I'm going to sell this. This is where. My first target profit will be, and this is where my second target profit will be. So this is going to be a long term. So why, why are we so, so um, confident and excited about this trade? Because on the daily and weekly time frame, there is a very big bearish flag right there that we expect to play out. Okay, very big bearish flag that has been there for a while. The market did give us an impulse move. And it has been on a corrective. So we're expecting that big bullish flag to play out. So even if they're, they're going to do a lot of manipulations, a lot of you know, fundamentals, a lot of stories around it, we're still expecting price to expect the structure right here. Because this is nothing but a correction. So when the correction is done, we hope to catch the continuation. And when that continuation is onward, don't expect it to happen immediately because if it does, if it's too easy, then everybody will become billionaires. So they try to make it complicated, try to give you a lot of drawdowns, try to give you reasons to doubt your analysis, try to make you close out on your positions, close out on your losses so they don't have to pay too many people. But if you are approaching this market as an investor, knowing that for a position that has the potential of giving you a thousand plus pips, they would be as patient, as patient as, it, as patients can be. I'm trying to think of an analogy. Is it a dog or what? So you will be as patient as can be. Why? Because trades like this expect 
a lot of manipulations, expect a lot of stop loss being hit, expect a lot of things to happen. Because if they make it too easy, then they'll have to pay a lot of people. So it's all about it's all about market psychology right here. These are some of the things we're teaching our classes. So that way you won't be you won't allow the market stress you out unnecessarily. You won't allow the market to uh, take take all your money. You will trade with very appropriate lot sizes, and then you will be able to do other things aside forex. You don't need to bury yourself in this market. All you have to do is see reason to take good setups and take your market. I'm very, I'm, I'm going to keep saying this this year because the whole of last year I was, I was more like married to this market. I was, I was married to the charts, married to trading, and I was trading all the time. So I could make $500 this week, and because I'm always trading, next week I could lose $250 and then be back to $250. So another week I could make $1,000, and then the next I could lose $400. So when you look at it, it doesn't really, really add up. But like me being in a market that has a potential of a thousand plus pips and patiently wait out to take the thousand plus pips. So imagine using standard lot size to target the thousand pips. Of course, I know it won't happen in one week, it won't happen in two weeks. So what does that mean? It means all I have to do is look for great setup, expect the drawdowns, because these drawdowns happen, especially when the market is at setups where they know a lot of investors are looking to come into. So you know retail traders, some of them are also you know, eyeing those zones and they take you all out because they know you will be more susceptible to over leveraging, to increasing the lot because they're like, oh, it's too clear. The sell is too clear. This is a clear sell, it's a clear buy. And then you go buy, you go sell, and they take out all of your stops and they allow the market right. So that's the more reason why you should look to trade as an investor this year have an account that you could call a savings account, more like a trading account or a savings account. So just leave it there because most times when people go save, they keep the money there for years, you know, months, years and all. So why not why not approach the market in that kind of in that um, kind of mentality? Why not take positions that you could hold for months, they could hold for weeks, they could hold, you know, for a long time until you get what you're looking for. Because when you do that, you save yourself a lot of stress. So GPAUD is a long term. So even if you, you, you don't want to go the whole nine yards, you could just decide to just go a thousand pips. You know, just take your profit right at this point and you will be the wiser. So my bias for GBPAUD for the year is a long term sell. The same same thing as Euro Chef. My bias for Euro Chef for the year is a long term buy. So currently, this is going to give a lot of people stress, take out all of their stops, make them close out on their positions, make them feel they're wrong, and then when they're done with all of that, then they'll allow the market to move in the way it should move. And when the market begins to move in the right way, it will be long term, but then they've already made a lot of profit off retail traders. So don't, don't allow these guys get you this year. What you should try to do is play safe, trade wisely, trade, trade as an investor, and remember to trade to profit. Thank you for watching. So I see you again next time. Have a blessed day. And look forward to a profitable, very, very profitable week. Bye-bye.